adenomatous lesions. And the type 3 uh, is considered to represent deep submucosally invasive cancer. However, the problem is a lesion with nice type 2 uh, classification can be slightly invasive, not only benign adenoma, but also it can be a, an invasive cancer, so you must be careful. We Japanese experts gathered together to uh, publish a new classification, which is called JNET classification. And our classification have divided NICE type 2 into type 2A and type 2B. And type 2A is usually the pattern for low-grade intramucosal neoplasia. And type 3 is uh, of course, representative of deep submucosal invasive cancer, but the type 2B is in between high grade intramucosal neoplasia or shallowly invasive cancer. So, the lesions with the type 2A is almost benign, so you can uh, remove it with polypectomy or EMR. And lesions with the type 3 pattern should be resected surgically. However, uh, type 2 lesions can be slightly invasive, so you must be careful. So, envelope resection would be preferable, and ESD is the best way to remove the lesion envelope. And you know about the Kudos classification. I will not explain it in detail, but type 1 to type 5. And type 5 is subdivided into two, 5i irregular type and the 5N not structural type. Um, again, it is a little bit complicated, but type 5I is further divided into low grade and high grade. And the low grade is slightly irregular big button. And high grade is highly irregular big button. And it is also important because um, the region with highly irregular pit pattern can be deeply invasive. So maybe you had better to send the region to surgery. But maybe uh, the region with slightly irregular pit pattern can be treated endoscopically. And uh, ESG also recommends the use of high definition endoscopy and also chroma endoscopy. Chroma endoscopy means real chroma endoscopy and uh, virtual chroma endoscopy too, so LBI or BLI. This is important in order to establish the feasibility of endoscopic resection and to verify indications for envelope resection with ESD. Now I'm going to talk about treatment resection. Briefly talk about EMR. There are some tips for EMR. Uh, this region was pretty big, to uh, 25 millimeters in diameter, and it looked a little bit depressed. But the bit pattern was only slightly irregular, n not so much irregular. So I decided to remove it with EMR. Started the injection at the periphery, but was not enough. So. I sometimes prick directly into the region to elevate the lid. And I open the snare and the position of the snare just in between the lesion and the muscle layer. Not, uh, you should not involve muscle layer, but you should not remain um, some part of cancer or the lesion. So, uh, the removal was very quick. And uh, the specimen included surrounding some mucosa, uh, surrounding normal mucosa layer. And the, the final diagnosis was intermucosal cancer uh, in Japanese standard. Maybe you can call it high grade dyspepsia, but anyway, uh, it was unblocked resection without any remnant. <coughs> Another case. It was not very big, but it was located just on the hepatic flexure. So in that case, what would you do? Start 
injection at the pre uh, proximal side of the region. So in the ascending common side of the region will be preferable. So like this, don't inject to the distal part. If you inject the distal part, uh, the injection will hide the region to the ascending column. You will not see the region quite well. So after a good elevation, the uh, resection was rather easy. And the final diagnosis was also intermucosal cancer. And uh, this was done many years ago. Uh, yeah, 12 years ago, I was only 48 years old. I'm Kashida from Japan. And with this no need for some. Sorry. So, uh, the region was suspected to be cancer and it located in the rectum. The patient refused to have the surgery. So I injected at the proximal side first, but the elevation was not enough. So I pricked it into the distal side too. And look at the needle. In, withdraw the needle during injection. That's a very important point. If you push and push, uh, the, the region will not be elevated enough. So withdraw back the needle uh, during the injection and uh, push the snare against the wall of the column or the rectum and widely open the snare and grasp the surrounding tissue of the region. So, because I was suspecting that the region can be an invasive cancer, so I grasped <laughs> rather big. Maybe it was too big, but uh, I, I didn't feel any resistance, so I cut it and it was successful without any bleeding or perforation. So it was uh, cancer, invasive, slightly invasive. So there's a list of tips for endoscopic removal of large colorectal lesions. As I said before, pretreatment evaluation is very important, and you should use image enhancement and. Posture change of the patient is very important before you start the resection. So you should have a good view of the lesion. If the right diffuse position is better to visualize the lesion, maybe you should change the position to right diffuse, if not otherwise. Anyway, uh, uh, posture change is also important. And number two, submucosal injection is the key point for it. EMR and uh, you should prick and inject at the proximal end of the region first for large lesions. For small lesions, anywhere, anywhere is good. But uh, for large lesions, uh, end, the, uh, you should uh, And the sometimes uh, you can uh, prick uh, uh, the uh, uh, to limit the number of cells. So, Break, 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 uh, will cause the leak of the solution. So just one break or two breaks will be enough. And and the 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 you should try to lift the needle to 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 and snaring it is of course important. And for a large lesion, I usually start with a large and rigid snare. And you should start from the most suspicious part. So if you suspect a focal cancer, maybe you should remove that part first. And you should include the surrounding normal mucosa too. So you should keep free margin. And during closing the snare, you should apply gentle suction, not too much, but the gentle suction it can help you. And uh, after grasping the lesion with the snare, you, you should lift the lesion towards the lumen a little bit during the cut. And if it's a piecemeal, you should change to a smaller snare for additional cuts. So this is an example of piecemeal EMR. It was done many years ago. I was 49 years old or something. So 
I started with uh, injection at the, the proximal end of the region because the region was the five centimeters. And maybe you can identify someone here looking at me. Yeah, so with all the needle during the injection, I forgot to tell you, but uh, the injection was started at uh, 3 o'clock, 20 minutes after 3 o'clock. Now, two minutes have passed. So, injection right at the center of the region. And first, I used a big stair to remove as big as possible. And this was the first cut. And included the surrounding normal mucosa so this was the first cut, and this is the second cut. And uh, I forgot to tell you, but the lesion is stained with crystal blood. I examined the lesion beforehand, and this is, is the third cut, and this is the fourth cut, and I included the surrounding normal mucosa too. That's very important. So this was the last cut. Now the time is 28 minutes after 3. So it took only 8 minutes to remove this 5 centimeter lesion. So this may be able is not bad. So you should confirm the periphery. So there is no remnant of lesion. That's very important. Okay. So other tips for endoscopy EMR are uh, uh, Careful inspection of the post-EMR mucosal defect, as I did during the last demonstration. So, uh, use image enhancement or dye to confirm the, uh, the, the periphery. And if there is uh, some remnant, you should apply hot professor biopsy or APC as necessary. And management of the specimen is also important. Retrieve all the specimens, even if it was a piecemeal, and try to assemble and reconstruct every piece. And pin them, pin, pin the specimen on the rubber disc or something. And careful pathological evaluation is very important. So you should discuss with your pathologist about the uh, assessment. And after piecemeal, EMR surveillance for recurrence is very important. Two years ago, uh, young, uh, one of my young colleagues uh, presented a paper at the American DDW. In that paper, uh, we followed up more than 4,000 uh, regions after endoscopic treatment. And among them, 0.7% local recurrence occurred. Uh, very few, but uh, yeah, 0.7 percent. And all patients with local recurrence were those in whom the initial treatment had resulted in piecemeal resection or in completely uh, in complete resection with a tumor positive margin. So piecemeal resection sometimes is not very good. According to some literature, um, incomplete resection can be a major, one of the major causes for interval cancers. And according to a multi-center prospective study in Japan, factors associated with local recurrence in uh, EMR were piecemeal resection and no treatment of magnification means insufficient inspection before cut. So you must evaluate the first if the evaluation is not enough, maybe uh, you will not uh, do uh, appropriate treatment and there can be recurrence. And a factor associated with local recurrence in ESD was also PCB resection. ESD is usually a lot of resection, of course, but sometimes it results in PCB resection in difficult cases. In such cases, recurrence can occur. And according to some other literature, when the number of feces is more than five, uh, five or more, the recurrence rate is high. So limit to the number of feces to two or three, in, even in basement research. I will show you some examples. Uh, this was a pretty big lesion, 30 millimeter in diameter. And we examined the lesion very carefully. And 
Mandel, investor pattern and surface pattern was rather irregular. So we judged it, judged it as a uh, JNET type 2B region. So uh, there, there was a possibility of intermittent causal cancer or even uh, shallowly invasive submucosal cancer. And the bit pattern was slightly irregular, not so much. So we did not send the patient to surgery, but uh, we applied ESD, not the piecemeal EMR for this case. And there were two foci of uh, submucosal invasion. Two locations there, and the region was invasive. But it, luckily, it was just shallow invasion, not deep. So, ample resection and with ESD was enough for this patient. And so, what should have happened if we had resected this region in piecemeal fashion? We might have missed the invasive foresight. There were two sites of invasion, but if you cut it in piecemeal, maybe you can miss. Or we might have encountered the local recurrence afterwards without knowing the invasion, maybe. Afterwards, uh, you will notice some local recurrence. Another case, 60 millimeter in diameter. Would you like to resect this in piecemeal fashion? It looks rather soft. Maybe piecemeal resection can be acceptable. You might think. But uh, we performed ESD and the region was uh, deeply invasive in one site. And it was associated with lymphatic invasion too. So additional surgery was performed afterwards, of course. And so some cases it is difficult. So what should have happened if we had resected the region in piecemeal fashion? Again, we might have missed the invasive focus and vessel permeation too. And we might have encountered the local recurrence or metastasis afterwards if you miss the uh, vessel permeation. But there was a hint. Uh, this is the picture of the same patient. Do you notice something? Some red part <coughs> at the center. And with uh, NBI and magnification, uh, this pattern was jaded type 2B, so you can predict that it can be deeply invasive. And uh, Professor Kelly Ponchin of France also uh, described that when performing piecemeal EMR, the cancerous area should not be cut in pieces. And this is our Japanese uh, guideline for ESD and EMR. EMR. I was uh, vice, vice chief of this group. And uh, when performing piecemeal EMR, uh, the cancerous area should not be cut in pieces. Otherwise, it would be difficult to pathologically evaluate the invasion depth or vessel permeation. But, so, uh, the cancerous area should not cut in pieces, but however, it is not always easy to identify the cancerous part, the invasive part. So, unblocked resection is preferable, even without knowing where is the invasive. If you perform unblocked resection, you can remove it. And so, piecemeal EMR versus ESD. We prefer ESD. And the reasons are. It's not always easy to distinguish between intermucosal neoplasm and some mucosal invasive cancer. So there's a possibility of invasive cancer. So it's not always easy to identify the invasive or cancer or foci, as I said before. So unblock resection is required for uh, and unblock resection is required for precise pathological assessment. And piecemeal resection can result in local recurrence. Other reasons. Uh, in regions associated with fibrosis, even piecemeal EMR is difficult to perform. With fibrosis, it's difficult. Or for huge region, even piecemeal EM EMR can be time consuming. Or 10 centimeter region, maybe piecemeal resection result will uh, 
be three hours, two hours, or three hours. And ESD is becoming easier than before with the learning curve and thanks to the advancement of techniques and instruments. So ESD is not, uh, you need not afraid of ESD anymore. Anyway, that's too, too much to say that you should be careful, but anyway, it is a little bit safer and easier than before. And again, our Japanese guideline, ESD is the most suitable method for unblocked resection. And as I said many times, peace may be among, may make it difficult to establish a pathological diagnosis of the invasion death and to determine a free resection margin. Uh, this was done many years ago in Yaroslavli. The lesion was huge, but anyway, I did it. This is another case done in our institute. It was also very big. So uh, the, our guideline indicates the indication for ESD in colorectal tumors. And uh, it is a little bit complicated, so i say it briefly, maybe LST, non-grainer type, especially suited to the breast type, is often and can be invasive and often associated with fibrosis. So it's a good indication. And the region suspected to be carcinoma with shallow submucosal invasion can be a good um, candidate for ESD. And the lesions, mucosal lesions uh, with submucosal fibrosis, associated fibrosis, is a good candidate. And uh, some dysphagias in ulcerative colitis is hard to remove with, because of the inflammation and fibrosis. So, Ulcerative colitis associated neoplasia can be a good candidate. And finally, local residual or recurrent early cancers after endoscopic resection can be a good candidate for ESD. I'll show you some cases later. So, uh, to briefly summarize, um, indication for ESD is LST non type and recurrence after EMR is so uh, LC number of type when uh, more than two, uh, two centimeters in size. And even if the region is less than two millimeters in size, if it, it is recurrence after EMR, maybe uh, re-EMR will be difficult. So maybe you have better resected with ESD. And a huge elastic granular type can be treated piecemeal, but it is very time consuming, so ESD would be easy. I'll show an example. Uh, this is uh, LST non granular type, suit depressed type. You may think it's uh, severely depressed, but it's not. And uh, it's concave in shape, you no know, stepwise depression. So, and uh, with magnification and image enhancement, the vascular pattern and pit pattern was slightly regular, but not so much. Rather regular. So. We thought that we could treat it endoscopically, not surgically. But as you can anticipate, after the injection of solution, the lesion was not lifted at all. And it's a typical non-lifting sign. So in the past, we had to operate on such patients because we did not have ESD. But you cannot remove it with a snare. But with the ESD, you can remove such a uh, region with fibrosis too. And the fibrosis uh, was moderate, not so severe. So the resection was successful. And this was the final cut. And this is the resected specimen. It was minimally invasive at one site, only 100 micrometer. So it was curable. So, uh, and do I have some more time? Okay. So uh, now, from now on, I'm going to show some technique for a non-lifted lesion due to the fibrosis, which is caused by previous biopsy. This is a lesion not so big, and a biopsy has been taken at the previous clinic. 
and you can see some depressed part, but it was just the scar of the biopsy. And uh, maybe on the right side you can see some convergence of bulge too. And with the magnification imaging enhancement, there is a scar to the center, but there was no sign of invasive cancer. But after injection, the, the lesion was not lifted well, so I had to perform ESD for this case, and the lesion was associated with fibrosis. And the final diagnosis was intermucosal cancer or hybrid dysphagia. It was not very big, so maybe it could help resected with a snare if the biopsy had not been done. But because the biopsy, the lesion was associated with the fibrosis and it couldn't be removed with a snare. So I had to do ESD. Another case, 10 millimeter or smaller than 10 millimeter, not so much big. But uh, again, a biopsy had been taken at the previous clinic, so severe for the convergence can be seen. And there was a, a mucosal defect because above C at the center, but there was no sign of deep invasion. So I decided to remove it with a snare, but the injection, after injection, the lesion was not lifted at all. So I had to perform ESD and at the center, the fibrosis was very severe. Anyway, I succeeded in the procedure, but the pathology was only low-grade adenoma. Low-grade adenoma, 10 millimeter in size. ESD is ridiculous, but I had to because of the previous biopsy caused fibrosis. So, a biopsy this should be avoided before an endoscopic treatment for color religions. Before surgical operation, okay, uh, please take a biopsy, but before uh, endoscopic resection, you should not take bugs. Some other case, now I'm going to talk about ESD for recurrent lesion after piecemeal EMR. After piecemeal EMR, as I said, recurrence can occur, but the recurrent lesion is very hard to remove. Uh, this is an old, old case, uh, 20 millimeter LST granular type, homogeneous type was resected with a snare and EMR resulted in piecemeal resection and a pathological uh, diagnosis was horizontal margin cannot be evaluated. And uh, the operator applied APC at the periphery of the region. Mm. And maybe there was some bleed, so the operator put some clips to close the wound. Mucosal defect should not be sutured after piecemeal resection. Piecemeal resection, you cannot know if there is a remnant or not, so you should not suture the wound. And uh, six months later, the scar looks rather normal, but you must be careful, there is uh, some polypoid area like this. But uh, recurrence was not witnessed, I don't know. This is, I saw this picture and I can say that this is a recurrence, but the recurrence was not removed, nor was it followed up for many years. And six years later, there is a big leech at the scar. So I had to remove it with the ESD, but it was very tough because of severe fibrosis and the location was also near to the illocecal bulb. So it was very tough, but anyway, I could uh, succeed and it was intramucosal cancer. So I was relieved, not invasive cancer. And uh, eight months after ESD, the scar was normal. And 17 months, 29 months after ESD, it was okay, no recurrence now. Another case, 82-year-old female with 10 millimeter leaf. And, uh, E EMR was performed at another hospital and the pathological diagnosis was intermucosal cancer but the horizontal margin was positive. So the previous doctor sent, referred the patient to me. Ah, no. After that, the three months later, local recurrence was found and then the previous doctor sent the patient to me. And this is the picture. And you can identify protruded area. So this should be the recurrence of remnant 
but you must be also careful that the arrow indicates the flat part. So this region not only includes the protruded part, but also the flat part too. And uh, magnification indicates that the surface of the protruded part was very irregular. So of course I suspected that the region can be deeply invasive cancer, but the patient was 82 year old people. So uh, she refused to have the surgery. I performed the ESD, but the patient had a very long colon. And the lesion was, of course, associated with fibrosis, so it was very tough. But anyway, I could uh, remove the lesion, and so you can see the reddish protruded part and the white tissue flat part. The pathology diagnosis was deeply invasive submucosal cancer, so usually we recommend additional surgery, but because of her age, the patient refused to have the surgery. So we are now carefully following up the patient. But uh, 12 months after ESD and 26 months after uh, ESD, there was no local recurrence and with the CT scan, no metastasis at all. So she was lying. Can I continue? <laughs> and, okay. So uh, now we have some additional techniques and instruments. And there are many, but maybe I can briefly talk about the pocket creation method. Pocket creation method is like this. You make a small mucosal incision and dissect the submucosa layer and make a big pocket just below the region. Uh, the patient was 88 year old now, taking edoxaban toxic hydrate, so antithrombotic. And the region was 50 millimeter in diameter. I tried to make a big pocket under the region like this. So, here's the video. So, make a rather small incision to the mucosa layer and uh, dissect the submucosa layer like this. Now, without extending the mucosa incision, so you enter into the submucosa layer and broaden and widen the pocket like this. And of course, finally, you make a mucosal incision. Yeah, like you can see now, how the circumference mucosal incision and dissect the periphery part, right side and left part of the leg. So, uh, pocket creation method is. Uh, very useful for large lesions like this. It was the intermucosal cancer. Another technique is a traction device. You can make it handmade too, but uh, this SO clip is in market in Japan and also in Korea too. And maybe in Vietnam. The lesion was uh, 48 millimeters located at the splenic fracture. Splenic fracture can be very uh, tricky and the lesion was looks homogeneous on the right side but on the left side there was rather big nodule and the surface of the nodule was a little bit irregular rather irregular so you must be careful so envelope resection is necessary uh, I performed live endoscopy at our live demonstration, live demonstration course so after mucosal incision, um, some mucosal di dissection was made. And this is SO clip. You put the clip into the sheet of the clip, like this. And yeah, you put up the clip in the column. And you can rotate the clip like this. And grasp the end of, and um, this is the end of the lesion like this and pull the loop part by another clip and pull back, pull back maybe five centimeters and shoot the clip now you can have a good traction because of this special clip so after applying this clip you can see the submucosa layer more easily you can have a very good, a good view of the submucosa layer 
So the sub mucosa dissection can be very easy. So good view is very important. <coughs> Without any bleeding, you can have a good view of the sub mucosa layer, muscle layer, and the region. So the lead and this section was complete. And for the big region, but it was just hybrid display here. This is another type of region for that. Uh, I removed the region on the same day of live demonstration. So, let me conclude my lecture. Uh, most of large covector lesions can be resected uh, with a snare. However, envelope um, um, removal with ESD is best for avoiding recurrence for large lesions. And ESD is now easier and safer than before, so thus uh, ESD can be a good treatment option for large colorectal lesions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Nashida. Uh, maybe some questions? Did I talk too much? No question? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kashida, for a uh, very nice and useful presentation. I have uh, one question. Some experts recommend to do uh, systematically uh, argon plasma coagulation as a preferred uh, after MRI. Uh, I agree with that. It's Necessary to do it after uh, every uh, mechanical or... I set up apply APC after EMR, and especially after unblock EMR, I don't apply APC. And after piecemeal EMR, maybe APC can be um, useful. I agree, but um, I don't believe in APC too much because. You don't know how deep, how far you are coagulating the tissue, especially the deeper part. You can see the surface. Surface is coagulated with APC, but uh, is it deep enough or not? It's a very questionable. But if you apply APC too much, you can cause perforation. So, but you are, if you are afraid of perforation, maybe uh, coagulation may not be enough. So APC is not reliable. So um, I usually, uh, so in PCML EMR, um, if I'm afraid of some remnant, I usually apply hot box in process. Um, so remove the small tissue with the hot box process and retrieve the tissue and confirm with the pathology. With APC, you cannot see the pathological result. So hot biopsy, remove the tissue, and so you can see the specimen, and you can have the pathological diagnosis too. So I think hot biopsy process is better for piecemeal resection, at the end of piecemeal resection. I remember that before the Belgium uh, tried to uh, treat the virus of esophagus with a dysplasia, with an argon also, and uh, the people there had the surprise after because they uh, are growing uh, cancer from some cause. Yes, that can. And that's why I agree with you that uh, we don't know exactly what to do with the APC uh, for treating lesion. Okay, only the surface is that very good. Yeah. And uh, if some bleeding occurs, you can you coagulate only the blood and not the tissue. So there can be pregnant. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe one more question. Yes. Uh, a question from me. Uh, what do you think uh, you mentioned? Uh, what is the most difficult uh, lesion for remove for you? With ESD? Yes, in colon. In colon. Well, uh, yeah, Dr. Ohata showed us uh, some uh, chitter depressed lesion at the end of the procedure. I don't know the result yet. But before that, he removed a bulky lesion. Of course, the size matters, but um, if the lesion have 
very much protruded part, the lesion can be associated with uh, thick vessels and fibrosis. So you must be careful for protruded, huge protruded lesion. So, and you cannot have a good view of the submucosa layer in such a case too. So, huge protruded lesion is most difficult for me. Or um, recurrence after piecemeal EMR or after uh, insufficient ESD, recurrent lesion can be very difficult to do. Thank you very much for this question. Uh, no additions for the next question.